In terms of a general cure for diseases of the hearts, in my last part of my talk, I want to talk a little bit about how we cure this issue of pride and this problem of pride. I wanted to read to you something that Al-Hafid ibn Hajar rahimahullah said. Al-Hafid ibn Hajar said, the heart has been singled out for this because it is the leader of the body through the purification of the leader, the subjects become purified. Meaning the heart of the body is like the leader of the Muslims. When the heart becomes pure, the rest of the body becomes pure. So Al-Hafid ibn Hajar rahimahullah continues to say, so if you, O servant of Allah, wish to cure your heart, then it is upon you to be truthful with regards to seeking refuge with Allah. First thing Ibn Hajar says, be truthful with regard to seeking refuge with Allah. The first ayah that we read from the Quran, the statement of Musa, that I have sought refuge with Allah from every prideful person. And that encompasses from the, from the person themselves. And then Al-Hafid ibn Hajar says, to put your trust in Him, to pray a de great deal of supplementary prayers, nawafil prayers, to perform actions of obedience to Allah frequently, to pray the night prayer and to treat your heart by making it continuously stick to the remembrance of Allah and befriending the righteous and to frequently recite the Quran and indeed Allah will indeed allow all of this to be preserved by Him. SubhanAllah. And Hafid ibn Hajar gives us some general principles relating to all of the diseases and the sicknesses of the heart. The nawafil prayers, putting your trust in Allah, the night prayer, obedience to Allah, seeking refuge with Allah, remembrance of Allah and befriending the righteous. And one of the most important remedies for overcoming the diseases of the heart is to study and to, and to ponder the texts and the ayat and the ahadith that talk about the warnings and the issues of the diseases of the heart. By reflecting upon the glory and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that Allah azawajal describes himself subhanahu wa ta'ala with this term because he subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in every single way and he is the one who is deserving of pride. He is the one who is deserving of being above all of his creation and controlling them. And when we reflect upon the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we realize the imperfection of our own selves and this helps us to correct the problem of pride. Also, humbling yourself in the presence of those people who you think yourself to be better than them. You meet someone and you think, you know, Alhamdulillah, I'm better than this brother. And when you feel that disease start to go into your heart, what do you do? You humble yourself before them. You remind yourself that you don't know what you're going to die upon or what they're going to die upon. Like some of the Salaf said, when I meet somebody who is older than me, I think this person has had more chance to do good deeds than me. And when I meet somebody that is younger than me, I think this person has had less chance to do sin than me. So everybody that you look at, you look at yourself as being inferior to all of them. And you don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, some people say, well, I got knowledge. They don't have knowledge. But subhanAllah, sometimes knowledge is a trial for a person. Sometimes knowledge is an adab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you don't act upon it. So what makes you think you're going to be from the people who will act upon it? From the people whose deeds have been accepted? So when we don't rush to judge other people and we have this problem in our society, we're very quick to judge other people. That we start to see ourselves as being inferior and we treat people justly and we don't judge other people. You know, you see a brother wearing a certain kind of clothes or you see somebody in a certain, you know, kind of with a certain kind of mannerism and immediately shaitan comes to you and you look at yourself as being superior. Remind yourself that you don't know what you're going to die upon and you don't know what they're going to die upon. And they may be from the most beloved of the people to Allah when they die, and you may be from the most hated. So when you remind yourself of that, inshallah, this will help you to overcome pride. And one of the remedies of arrogance is to remind yourself that you're just like everybody else. You're from the children of Adam, and Adam was created from dust. You are created from, uh, as Allah describes, a disliked water. You were created from, subhanAllah, something disliked and something which people consider to be unclean. You are created from this. Your father Adam was created from dust. SubhanAllah. What gives you the right to walk on the earth in pride? Remember who you were created, how Allah created you and what you were created from. And remember how you, you know, lived your life as a child, as a baby with, you know, and you were, you, all the problems you had and all the dependency on other people. And when you remember these kinds of things, this protects you from pride. And when you remember the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, verily the most honorable with you in the sight of Allah is the believer that has taqwa. How many of us can say that we have taqwa? 
taqwa is something to act upon the obedience of in obedience to Allah in every single thing that Allah commands you and to avoid disobedience to Allah in every single thing that Allah commands you to avoid. Which of us can say that we've done that? Which of us can say that we have more taqwa or that our deeds have been accepted? None of us have had angels come down and say to us, Ya Akhi, your de deeds have been accepted. So when we remember this, this helps us to overcome pride. The arrogant Muslim needs to realize that no matter what he achieves, he is too, we he is too weak to achieve stature like the mountains and he will never be able to rip the earth apart as Allah says. Al-Qurtubi says, commenting on the state of, uh, statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be moderate in your walking and lower your voice. Indeed, the harshest of all voices is the braying of the ass. Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he says, do not walk in insolence on the earth is a prohibition of arrogance and enjoining humility. Subhanallah. So even in your walking, even in your outward characteristics, be a person who is humble, who has humility. Don't walk at the front of the people. Don't push yourself to the front all the time. See yourself always as being inferior. Another remedy for arrogance is to remember the punishment Yawm Al-Qiyamah for the people who are arrogant. And to remember, subhanallah, all of the, the weakness of, 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 uh, of Bani Adam. How Allah says that mankind was created da'ifa. He was created so weak and so powerless and so helpless. And subhanallah, after that, look at the pride that Bani Adam have. Look at the pride that we have in ourselves, subhanallah. So this is something that we need to overcome.